it's like swinging through the jungle as Tarzan. You, you don't directly get one vine and swing from one place to the to the end. You have to grab onto different vines as you swing. You might need to pick up jungle. Jane along the way. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? You exactly. might need to pick up Jane. And, and like you said, um, you might be on that journey and then something else appears. Hi, and welcome to the final episode of the Right Route Series 1. That's Liam. He is an e-products manager and host of the Get Work Savvy podcast. And that's Coyote. He's a professional speaker, entrepreneur and star of the BBC's The Apprentice. On this episode, we'll be discussing the topic of progression. We'll find out what's the best place to start, advice on how individuals can get to their end goal, and we'll give you top tips on how to seek opportunities and stretch your capabilities. So now, I want you to ask yourself, What is it that you're working towards? Where is it you want to be long term? But more importantly, how are you going to get there? So we're going to be talking about progression in this episode. And it's something that I don't think many people consider, especially when they're entering that first job. Mm. Um, So I wonder if you could just share perhaps some of your experiences of of how you've progressed throughout your career, Kaidi? Yeah, and I like what you just said there, Liam, the fact that you said some people don't consider it. And just before I share mine, I think one of the reasons people don't consider it is that it's very, very hard to see more long-term when you're young. And it's like, for me, I never really planned five years, like I never planned ahead like that. I mean, I only really tangibly now started planning ahead very recently within the last couple of years because Whenever I used to sign forms, I used to sign forms 16 to 24. But now, as soon as I, as soon as I turned 25, I was signing forms 25 to 30. So I was like, oh my God, 30 is now in the picture. It's, ladies and gentlemen, it is now in the picture. So I've now had to now think forward, think, damn, like, I'm in the 25 to 30 bracket now. So that is why I think it's important for me and why I have to start thinking forwards now. And one of the reasons I think it's important to look at progression, how you can work forwards in your career, is something that they say, you know, begin with the end in mind. Something that Steve Covey said in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And so once you kind of have the end goal of what you're working towards, then you kind of have progressive steps. You kind of tangibly reverse engineer it, look backwards and think, right, if I want to end up at Z, I need to get to Y. And I just need to get to X. And I realise I'm going backwards through the alphabet. And as soon as I don't know where I was going to go next, but you got what I mean, you kind of... Absolutely. You're, yeah. you're making your own steps to success, um, but equally you're, um, it, it's looking at that mountain that it might appear to start with mm. and thinking, man, how am I ever going to get to the top there? But if you just put one foot in front of the other, um, going through that, that steps to success that you can kind of reverse engineer, you can, can kind of mm. work your way up to that position. I think that's a, a, a wise thing to yeah, do. Yeah, I think you have to be very deliberate. I think you can sometimes look for life serendipities or life to give you things on the plate yes yeah every now and again you get blessings from life like wow i was not expecting this yeah they do happen and we're overwhelmed we're ecstatic but i I wouldn't sign up to that class and rely on that every single time sometimes you've got to be very deliberate on what you're going for so yeah yeah there's no golden ticket right no unless you're a willy wonka yeah (laughs) as much as we love the film yeah no they uh, like you say there might be opportunities that appear that you might think wow like I've just you've got to go for this one but being deliberate I think is, is such mm. an important thing um, and and I think that you know if if you are listening and you're in that position where you're thinking oh, I'm just at start I don't really know where to go or where it's going to lead me think of it as an opportunity to to learn and it's your first step that could lead on to that next thing mm. and it's important to realize that it could change like where you're trying to end up what do they say you have to be stubborn with your goals but flexible in your approach mm. so even though you're beginning with that end in mind you could be flexible as to what you might want to go from z to p for example i don't know it's, it's not going to be a straight road and no. i think there's there's an analogy that uh casey neistat the famous youtuber gave. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah. um he he said like it's it's like swinging through the jungle as tarzan you, you don't directly get one vine and swing from one place to the to the end you have to grab onto different vines as you swing. You might need to pick up jungle. Jane along the way. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? You exactly. might need to pick up Jane. And, and like you said, um, you might be on that journey and then something else appears. Because, I mean, from my experience, um, I, I started in the world of, you know, uh, giving my knowledge to people, being an assessor or a tutor. Um, and then opportunities happened along the way where I was able to, to go into the world of e-learning or, or creating online learning resources for people um, that I wasn't expecting, but actually was absolutely ideal 
um, to what it is I really wanted to do. So, so yeah, like thinking about just what is that next step, I think is really key for me. Yeah. Or even if you don't know exactly what, don't rest on your laurels. Don't just be mm. satisfied on where you're at. Yeah. Like I always say, like, I don't rest on my laurels. I don't even know where my laurels are. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe are they underneath for your chair? I don't know. <laughs> you know. So don't be too satisfied where you're at. Be happy, be content, but always be looking at where, where is, my, like you said, where is that next step? Where is it? It could be a big one, could be a small one, but think about how you can progress. And, and I think with progression as well, I think it's like, yes, learning all the skills and getting that experience in that particular role that you happen to be in, but always looking for that next opportunity and, and stretching what it is that you're good at and, and testing yourself and not just saying still, if that makes sense. Cool. I remember you were telling me before, Liam, you said that when you were at the supermarket, you almost accepted your fate. Do you remember what, what happened there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was, you know, a bit, a bit kind of down in the dumps and a bit despondent that things hadn't worked out for me. And, and absolutely I was, I was a bit lost for what to do. Um, and, and for, I think I spent over 10 years in the supermarket in the end, you know, a little bit before and a little bit after uni. But that was 10 years. that like, A decade like, in the game. Yeah. And, and as much as like, I enjoyed working with the people I was working for, the, the job wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, and it's so easy to get stuck in that rut. And I, I think what I'd say to people who've, who are perhaps a little bit lost and stuff is if you need to get a job to pay the bills, I absolutely understand that. You've got to do what you've got to do. But equally, don't just... Don't just settle and don't just take the easy route out. It's so easy to get comfortable. And I think that is that is a key thing for me is, is not being comfortable. Go outside your comfort zone mm. um, to try and see where different things will happen for you. Yeah. And it's like, if you're, and by default, the way life works is, like in life, you can't stand still. You're either dying or you're growing. So you're, if you're not progressing... Then by default, you are in... Re what's the opposite to progressing? Regress? Reverse? I don't know. <laughs> like Regression. Regression? Yeah. I don't know. Because it's like the world is moving. There's no, there's no pause button. It's not like you're where you're at. There's people, there's hungry cats who are younger than you. They're coming up. People leaving school, they're coming up. So if you're just being satisfied, people are still coming up. If life is... A, as, as much as we might want to think life is all roses and gold, it's, it's a mad competition out here. So it's like if you're just here just chilling, someone else is just going to come and overlap you, for example. So... Like I said, if you're not progressing, if you're not dying, if you're not growing, you're by default, you're, you know. Yeah, I, and I think that that's the key thing as well, that something we spoke about in, in previous episodes is thinking about, you know, what's the next thing you can learn, I think is an important thing for me. So mm -hmm. like that continuous progression, it's not just what is the next job I can do, but true, that's true. Actually, what is the next skill that yeah. I can learn? What is the next um, thing that I can get, like hone my skills on and, and develop to, to kind of be able to offer something a little bit yeah. different that might give you that opportunity. That's a good point, actually. So it's not just about progressing in your field, like physically your job, it's also in t like your internal. So you're not just externally being better, grow, get, getting promotions, etc. Whether it's like reading an extra book or whatever, I like that. Because I imagine like, because you're in the world of professional speaking and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. but like you didn't just get good at professional speaking and think, oh, that's me good. Oh, no, see, I always have to get better. It's like, even even from the show, from The Apprentice, it's like, I can't just, again, I can't just rest on my lot. I have to always be doing better. Even Ronaldo with his free kicks, it's like, he's always trying to improve. And the thing is, it's like, when you're at school, you, you we've come into the world by default progressing. You go from year one to year two to year three. We're progressing every year by default, but as soon as you finish school, you're no longer by default progressing. You're only progressing if... You choose to. When you're at school, you have to... Say in America, you don't get put back to second grade. You don't have to redo fifth grade. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're always progressing at school. But once you get to 16, you plateau unless you physically do it. And, and yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Like, at school, you're pushed by a teacher. Yeah, you have no you, choice. You've got somebody there kind of leading you. And it's up to you whether you, you kind of follow, the, follow their guidance or not. But at the end of the day, like, once you leave that world of school and education... Um, then it's on you, isn't it? Like it, no one's, no one's going to be. That, that's one thing that I learned, kind of transitioning through to sixth form, then to university, and then later on into the world of work, is that slowly, more and more, you get more responsibility for your own development. And I know they people talk about CPD and go, oh, what can I put? And, and do you want to explain what CPD is for them? Um, yeah. So if you're not aware, CPD, um, continuous professional development. Mm. Um, so a lot of companies now. Um, like you to have a, a plan in place for how you're going to improve and oh they want to see a plan yeah so um 
so before I, I left the supermarket game, even even in my supermarket job, everybody had to have a continuous professional development plan. And is that something that the company will write for you? Is that something you have to produce yourself? You have to think about what it is that you have to kind of reflect on how you can do better. And ultimately, it is about getting a better performance for you, for the company. But the way that I think about it is is adding another string to your bow. And it's, it's thinking about how can I improve myself? Because if you're in a role that perhaps you're not enjoying at the moment think of that continuous professional development to add another thing to your cv to show off i like the number string to your bow you want to have a harp at the end of the day right you want to have an absolute (laughs) harp so we can go hunting for that perfect job as as you mentioned uh, in previous episodes so yeah Mm. yeah i do i do like what you said about you know you having to really work on yourself like you know even though the companies, I mean, what if you're at a company and they don't encourage progression then? I think there's still opportunities. That I, the internet is such a fantastic resource. I mean, even if you go in on YouTube, um, mm. you can learn so much information out there that people are putting out there for free. Um, you've got the internet, um, you've got other other opportunities, not just YouTube. So you've got podcasts like this one where you can learn about how to improve your chances at work. You've got mm. um, other resources such as like, um, they call them MOOCs or massive open online courses. So there's massive wait, M oh MOOCs with a C M O O C. Okay, yeah. MOOCs massive online what massive open online courses. Why massive? Um, because they're open to everyone. So okay. it, you're not restricted to the location um, to the the time of day that you can you can take the course. Um, you know they're open to to anyone across the world as long as you've got access to the internet and you're keen and, and mm. happy to to learn and progress. So what we're basically saying is that once you leave school, education doesn't stop there, right? No, and and you know you will find some people trying to sell you education. Um, so what I would say is some of these marketers are quite clever in the way that they perhaps push something that you absolutely need. Um, but it's kind of thinking to yourself, what skill do I need to to get to that next step and and finding the resources that's suitable to you. If it is, that's, you need to pay for it, and you, you think that's going to be a value, fantastic. Um, but equally, I'd start off with those free resources to, to kind of get a base knowledge first. Mm. But I guess, especially if you're a young person who hasn't got a lot of money, don't go out spending, what, thousands on courses, right? Yeah, don't, don't like, sell all your worldly possessions for something <laughs> that might not um, pay off in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I think, like, the, the internet has just provided people with so many different opportunities. Yeah. It's like one girl was DMing me the other day about, um, she wanted advice for business. Oh, she said to me, what books would I recommend for business? And I said that before, I said, whatever you want to, you can just Google what you want to learn first. So it's like, because obviously business is a massive field. So it's like, what do you want to learn within it? And I said, you know, just Google what, you know, use the internet first if you, if you, if you can't afford to buy the book. Mm. Or even like, you know, Libraries are available yeah. as well. So the like, libraries are a thing of the past nowadays. Is that not many people go to libraries anymore, do they? Right? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I've I've seen some things in the news recently about people fighting to keep libraries open, and they are about. Um, so although people perhaps don't see them as as the number one resource to go to, if it is that you're struggling to buy the latest books, then then definitely go check out a library because yeah. you potentially could get a loan of that book for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. For, for I mean, free. I'm a very avid fan of reading i do love to read that's helped, definitely helped me with my progression it's like yeah I, my library like i feel smart just walking 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 in it do you know what i mean it's like Absolutely. like i feel like i need to get a proper bookshelf now i've got books for days like books for days and i'm a very slow reader you know i, I think it takes me an average one book takes me about two months <laughs> like i'm a slow you know i study i'm studying word for word if i don't know this word like conscientious worker i need to <laughs> work, I need to look up what does each word mean and i think like books are an absolute amazing resource because often people will give you not only um their tips and expertise but also a real kind of overview of, of something that you might have not thought of based on their experience they've they're sharing with you what they have learned mm. it's not just a fact um I mean, on, on the reverse to yourself, like, I, I read really slowly as well. Oh, and, do you read slowly as well? Um, well? One book every two months? Oh, not even that. I'm, I'm really awful with consuming books in okay. actual reading form, but I listen to books. So, oh, like, audio books. So you can get, like, some kind of audio versions of those as well, but that is um, at a cost to, for, for many places. So, um, so yeah, it, like, it's, it's also sticking to your strength of how you learn best mm. because we talked on previous episodes with Kismet and, and other guests um, volunteering could be an option so you can actually learn 
um, by being at the side of somebody and, and being able to ask questions live. You might like to listen to podcasts or audio books. You might like to read. Mm. Um, it's, it's finding the medium that will suit you and, and aiding yeah. you in that progression. Yeah. So, so for people who know that they want to progress and they, they know their end goal, and we talked about reverse engineering, um, what kind of tips and advice do you think we could give people planning out what it is that they want to do? Set yourself some goals, whether it's short-term or long-term goals. You know, you could, you could again, reverse engineer it. Like, where do you want to be in five years' time? Okay, to get there in five years' time, I need to be here in, within three years. Within three years, I need to be here in one year. From one year, six months, you know. So it's literally, like, for me, every time, every day, not every day, I'm not saying every day, like, 99% of the time when I wake up, I reflect, reflect on the day before, what I'm grateful for now and my goals for the actual day. Or, or sometimes in the, in the week, I might say, what's the goal for this month? Where am I at for the year? So lately, I've been writing in my, in my diary. Let me not say journal, manly, right? <laughs> so in my, in my diary, uh, lately, since it's really hit um, August time, I was really trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to try to achieve for the rest of 2019? Mm. You know, and then I started to figure out, from now, I already started planning, like, what are my 2020 goals? You know, so it's not just all about waiting. You don't have to wait for New Year's resolutions. Your res- New Year's resolutions are only effective on New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do your, I don't know, August 31st resolution. Do you know what I mean? It's, you can always be trying to plan what you want to be doing. I mean, I think I, I was about to mention that. So great minds. Uh, well, great minds, great, great um, minds think or what, what is it? I think alike. Like, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. People often you know, set that new year's resolution to, to get fitter or, or to, to have like, I'm going to learn a new skill or, or do this and do that. But actually setting those goals and, and reflecting what you're doing and, and journaling um, kind of, you know, your yeah, thoughts. Um, I think I think that's so important for people to do on a regular basis. And, you know, the, the period of time that you set is going to be individual to you. But perhaps like each month kind of have a, a, a little temperature check of, you know, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be. This is what I've done to get towards there. And then what do I need to do next month to to yeah. get myself into that position where I can tick that thing off the list and move on to the next mm. thing. So, yeah. And it's always like we said, I can't remember. That's it today. I can't remember if I said it today or previous. But I said that, you know, be flexible with your approach. Like, like I said, sometimes life just throws you these nice... I don't know. So I, I generally feel life wants me to win. Like I, I think life is on my side. That's just where my mindset is that life wants me to win. So it's like sometimes just a how do you, here you go. Like you know a dog throw you throw a ball to a dog. Like every now and again, like, it throws me a ball and I'm like Whoa, and I go get. It. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like be flexible. Sometimes life could throw you a massive serendipity that you don't expect. So uh, I, I think that's absolutely right. I think that um, something that we spoke to on the previous episode with Kismet and what you've been mentioning as well that life is going to spit out those opportunities for you. If it sees you working hard, you know what I mean? It's like, it rewards yeah. the people who work hard. And, and and another thing I'd say is like, think about those opportunities as well. Like absolutely take take the good ones that suit you. But sometimes you might get an opportunity that isn't necessarily what it is that you want to do. So so thinking about your progression and thinking about, is that opportunity right? Because I'm sure you get loads of opportunities, right? That aren't necessarily suited to what it is that you want to do. Mm. But I guess I guess definitely off the show as well. Then you have to be real selective, like you know which ones you really want to take up. But it's like even getting onto the show, for example, that was a progression in itself. It's like yeah. I didn't even think I was gonna get onto the show. Yeah. You know, like I, like I've touched on in previous episodes, I didn't think I was going to get on a car. I've applied before and I didn't get on. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I suppose it's it's also having that flexibility to to realize that if you don't, if you're not successful in that plan what's next mm. and uh, and giving yourself that time period to be able to, to pivot as as you mentioned and, and move on to the next thing mm. so. well we definitely agree that progression is key having an idea of how I mean then again is there anything wrong with people who just want to just be satisfied I mean if, if you're happy I guess right I, I think that's the key if you're if you're happy then yeah. then there's nothing wrong with you staying in that same job for 30, Tesco for 10 years 30 right? years Tesco's or Waitrose, sorry, for 10 years. Do, doing the best you know best job that you want to do to live the best life that you want to live because that's what it, it you know you work to live not live to work yeah um so although we're talking about you know progression and, and getting on to that next step and everything for me it's finding that job that 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 fills you up mm. um and if you are just happy doing a few hours every week at, at a job that's a bit mundane you don't have to think about and then you can switch off and go home and forget about it and then have an awesome life amazing then yeah. um then brilliant but um so it's being self-aware to realize 
to recognize are you are you are you settling or are you generally happy yeah and i think that's a fine balance isn't it because yeah. i always knew that i was kind of looking to do more but I just was lost in that journey mm. but there was a lot of people that I worked with and who I still see when I return to that supermarket um, who are happy doing what they do and they mm. go home and have a, a, a happy life and mm. awesome for them but it's not for everyone so it's it is individual um, and it's just kind of mm. figuring out what it is that you want to do and I think it's something that you mentioned on a previous episode it's about you what is mm. your why what is what is your aspiration what is your goal mm. and um and it's it's not necessarily being taken along with a crowd of of other people to to fulfill somebody else's dream it's fulfilling what it is that mm. you're passionate about and, yeah. and what you've set your sights on if you like what you're listening to don't forget to share this episode in any way that you can with anyone that you can and remember to use the hashtag the right route so hi to Rhiannon and thanks for coming on today could you just explain to the listener um what it is that you do um, I am a HR assistant at Cuthernham. Excellent. Now, we're talking about progression today. So I was wondering if you could just share your experience of, of perhaps where you went when you was kind of finishing up your GCSEs and what route you've taken from there. So I um, finished my GCSEs, um, came out with reasonably good grades. Um, I then, I didn't really know what I was going to do after that. So I went straight into sixth form. Um, at the time, it was just the easiest route. It's fairly easy to just go straight from school into sixth form. I did a year of that. Um, it wasn't for me. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't get very good AS levels. Um, and then from then, it was actually, well, stop sort of messing around now, actually figure out what you're wanting to do and get into a route that you know is going to suit you. Because I pretty much knew that A-levels weren't going to be for me. As I said, it was just the easier. Okay, so you did... So you did stop, you didn't go on to finish the A-level? No, I didn't, I just did the one year. Um, and then I applied for an apprenticeship with Cube Learning. And so got that, um, I did my apprenticeship there, so I got my level two business admin, um, which then set me up to then get my job with Cube Learning, um, which has now turned out successful. I've now recently just completed my CIPD as well. Excellent. Fantastic. Congratulations. So what do you think were some of the main things what helped you in your apprenticeship then to progress? Um, I would say, well, my colleagues around me at the time, um, I think especially being within the company that I was in, within the sector, being in the apprenticeship sector, um, they were particularly good with looking after me as, as an apprentice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say my colleagues, pretty much. My colleagues were my tutor at the time. And what made you, so you just got your C... IPD level three is that right what made you want to go for that uh progression so I I think go for as as much education as you can really and get Mm. get as many qualifications so do you think it's always important for young people to try to get that next thing you think oh yeah I definitely think whilst you're young and in this stage of life sort of thing like try and get as many qualifications as you can I think sometimes as you get a a little bit older you know although encourage it you might not necessarily have the opportunities Mm. as much and so when you've dropped out of your AS, I mean, A-levels are hard. Don't get They're really I know. hard. A-levels are hard. I'm <laughs> yeah, with you, I know. Like, It was like a massive jump yeah. from GCSEs to A-levels. Yeah, it it like, was huge. And right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like, like younger kids are prepped for how mm. much of a bigger jump it is. So even though you've got some good progression to where you are now, mm-hmm. do you think it's okay for some people to pivot? So, for example, you knew the AS weren't for you. What made you realise that, right, these are not for me? And like, what made you realise you want to do apprenticeship instead? Um, I was done being in the classroom. I no, think. I, I think. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, I got my first detention being in AS levels, and you I went, yeah, at yeah. You got detentions at and I thought, A-levels. yeah, this is so not for me anymore. I just wanted to get into the workplace. Like, yeah. I think I was ready to start like learning whilst I was earning, kind of thing. I was ready mm. to get into work and start learning the soft skills. And I think that was the thing for me. Whilst I was getting my AS levels, I sort of. I didn't massively know what I wanted to do. I knew HR was a thing for me, though. And I knew what I was learning wasn't... It wasn't going to be applicable to what I wanted to do. So you mentioned soft skills. Do you think developing soft skills helped you to progress? And what type? What what, what do you mean by soft skills? So things like email etiquette, like speaking on the phone, um, even just generally being within the work environment. I think it was very difficult when I first came from 
school and then being an apprentice. In fact, just to interject, I've seen the way she emails, like she's rapid with it with her fingers. Like she can email, <laughs> listen, she can email for days, you know what I mean? So it's like... It's been a few years to master that. Okay. I, um, I, didn't, I didn't expect it to be such a big jump then going from being in a school environment to a work environment. I think there are a lot of things that... So if someone had asked me whilst I was doing my A-levels, can you write an email? I'd have said, yeah, of course. And when you get into the work environment, it was, you know, someone would say to me, I remember it was like my second day and one of my colleagues said to me, oh, can you send an email to such and such saying this? And I remember I sat down, I went, yeah, fine. And I sat down at my computer and I went, oh, wait, so, so what do I write? Like, is it hi? Like, is it good morning? Hey, like, hey. like, what's appropriate and what isn't kind Yo. of thing? And, and those were the things that, like, you learn and it, it builds, like, a really good foundation to then base your career So how do you do your emails now? Do you say hi or hey? Or it's normally hi. It depends. If it's okay. internal, it's hi. If it's external, it's good morning or good afternoon. And what do you end the kind regards or regards? I'm or a kind regards kind of girl, yeah. <laughs> I'm a kind of regards girl. Kind of... I think everyone finds their own yeah, yeah. kind of, like, even, like, the structure of the email and how you set emails out. Everyone finds their own. What, what are you doing? Were you a kind regards? I, I started in healthy regards. I tested healthy regards. <laughs> I thought I'd test out healthy regards for a bit. It didn't really. You didn't catch on. Didn't catch on. <laughs> I, I'm a kind regards. So yeah, I play safe with that one. You're a kind regards. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so like, you you kind of looked at where it is you wanted to end up when you were making that decision to jump from from AS to or your your A levels and, and kind of finishing halfway through there, and then move into that apprenticeship. Was it, I know you, you mentioned, you know, you were keen to, to actually get some practical experience and, mm-hmm. and actually start, you know, going into that world of work. Um, was there anything that appealed to you, like you said, that you were done done with education and being in the classroom? Um, so was it because it was, it was a good mix of learning whilst getting a bit of money, whilst also getting some experience as well? Would that be fair to yeah, say? I, yeah, I think it was, I wanted to earn. That, that was what, I think that was one of the main things I wanted to start earning. Um, and I wanted, I didn't feel like whilst I was doing my but I didn't feel like I was starting my career. I wanted to like start, I wanted to get into a workplace and whether, whether I was going to stay at Cube or not, I hadn't, I hadn't actually planned that. Um, I hadn't gotten that far ahead, but I thought getting a qualification while still earning, whilst actually learning what it's like to be in a work environment and actually the life skills that you pick up from being in a work environment as well. So I would say it was a mixture of getting the qualification and earning. Okay, so something that we spoke about in a question we received and we've spoken about on, um, about choosing the right route for you, how did your parents react to you explaining that you were going to drop out of AS drop out of A levels and then and then go down the apprenticeship route was that an easy well, thing to talk about or I didn't get very good AS levels at all so it was kind of it was my choice to leave because I could have I could have stayed and I could have really sort of backed it up and I could have then worked really hard and got on kind of all right A levels but at that point it was kind of it was sort of done with I think my parents and my parents knew that it wasn't a levels weren't for me, but I think they wanted me to just sort of let me do me okay. and just see where I'd sort of end up a little bit. So I think that they were happy. They were happy that I was then getting into work, and they were happy that I was then still get, gaining the qualifications. I think my views stem from theirs in terms of getting as many qualifications and you're about as you can, especially. At, at my age, whilst whilst I can get as much as possible and take everything like an employer or or whoever will like offer. So if if anyone is at that crossroads and and they're trying to choose the right route for them, um, is there any advice that you give to them? Like thinking about what you know now and the experience that you've had. Obviously, it will be personal to everybody. Um, but what what advice would you give to people who are perhaps finishing their GCSEs and and thinking about what it is they're going to do next? I would say. The, if you're working, so if you're working towards qualifications and any education that you're getting, make sure that it's relevant. I hear so many people they go they go to university and they get this qualification, and then they come out and they have a job that's that's not relevant to what they've spent the last however many years, you know, trying to complete. So I sit I. It sort of then looks a bit, well, it's, it was a bit irrelevant then, and, and I can't help but think of it as a bit of a waste of time. So I would say any any qualifications that you're working hard towards, make sure that it's relevant to what you are wanting to do in the future. So you've been very lucky then, being able to drop out from AS and just keep progressing. What if people aren't as lucky as you? What do, what would they do? Like, what do you think? What would you have done? 
if I didn't get my apprenticeship. Yeah. Well, I was, I was very much, I didn't want to just go into a, a normal job. So I, as I said, I was, I was lucky, but I would have waited to find a, an apprenticeship. Hundred percent. Yeah, 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 definitely. I don't think it, it depends. I would, I would, uh, I would have either gone into an apprenticeship or I would have gone to a company where I could have seen progression. Mm. So I think you can. I did. I had a job at the time, so I was working at the weekend. I was just working at the um, local garden centre. So there garden is, center. yeah. So there is that kind of um, got to work and get out and mm. work. But in terms of if you're looking at a job as a long term thing. I'd suggest looking at somewhere where you think there's going to be progression for you. But you mentioned at the beginning, like, you didn't exactly know what you wanted to do as such. Mm -hmm. So what made you pick what you're doing now? I was intrigued in HR. You was intrigued? I was. So you I was intrigued, intrigued by it. So I thought, I, and if I'm being honest, at the time, I went for the apprenticeship. And I was looking for loads of different apprenticeships at the time, though. So as long as, that, as it was an apprenticeship, I thought mm. I'd dabble in it and see what I get. And then today, if I'm going to get a qualification out of it, then, then that's... So worst case, you get a qualification. Yeah. If you didn't like it, you would have just tried another one. Yeah, and it would have been like a business administration qualification. Mm. So like earlier when I said about a qualification you're getting that's going to be relevant to what you want to do in mm. the future, a business administration that's fairly, you know, it's across the board. I knew whatever I'd be doing would be a, probably an office-based job. Um, the HR apprenticeship came up and I was I was intrigued by it. My mum had been in HR before and it was it was something I was interested in. Did she tell you good things in. about it? Um, to be fair, the good and the bad, but I enjoy the good and the bad of it, bad, really. Bad like, that's part what? of the job. Bad like what? Well, being know? in HR, sort mm. of the, well, uh, you spoke earlier about redundancies, so like redundancies, resignations, that's not very nice to deal with, but it's, mm. it's, all, like, it's all learning, so it's the, the beefy parts that you learn the most and progress the most with, I believe. So yeah. it's the harder parts that I think that you learn more from. So for people who, who are perhaps listening and thinking, HR, like, they, they understand perhaps that it's about the redundancies you just mentioned. What other things do you have to do in that role? Um, we deal with absence, so holiday, sickness, um, compassionate leave. Um, we deal with um, policies and procedures. We deal with complaints. Um, and I think that HR is different everywhere. So in some places they do more, some people they do less. You can go to HR um, in one company and they'll only have one person and they will literally just be dealing with some administration. Um, in our company, for example, we do a lot, so there's five of us. Um, so, but we also look after like, all, of, all of the qualifications for the skills tutors. Um, yeah, we, we, we do a lot. We, and for example, all the equipment. So we deal with all the equipment for all of our employees too. Is there a compassionate leave, just a random one, on a debate with Piers Morgan and Josie, great, not great morning, what's it called? Good morning, Britain. Good morning. But I was on that, I should have known. Yeah, good morning, Britain, yeah. <laughs> Like, they had a debate about compassionate leave. Do you think people should have compassionate leave when their pet dies? Yeah. Yeah. But I've got a dog. Okay. He's my baby, so, so yeah. So, okay, just a random one. So how many, how many days off do you think you should get? For a dog? Yeah. Like, for your pet dies, like, what do you think? See, and this is difficult because I look at it from a business point of view. And, yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I'm and, curious. That's yeah, I'm curious. That's what, it's, it is a really difficult one. I would say three days maximum. Okay. What about if your fish dies? No. So what, so fish <laughs> no, dies, you get no days no, off? No, no days off. Maybe I'd, if I was your manager, I'd let you come in an hour late. If yeah. your fish dies. What if they <laughs> yeah. love their fish, though? And no, no okay. fish. <laughs> so thinking about progression, um, you mentioned how you were really keen to progress and get that experience and go on to the next level, and you've completed that further qualification after your apprenticeship. Could you just share some tips of what you do to kind of identify how you're going to progress to that next level of of what it is that you want to learn or the next step in your career? Well, for me, um, personally, I look at, um, say, like, my, my manager, for example, like, the, the levels above me, um, things like looking at, like, their job descriptions and things like that, trying to grab as much work as possible um, to progress. I think I didn't... I haven't massively got a plan in terms of where I end up in the future. Really long-term, I'd love to have my own HR company. And I'll get there one day, but I think at the minute... It, like I'd say just grab as much as you can and I think for young people I think that is the best advice that you could give is that grab e e like everything you can in terms of ex experience qualifications education like just grab it all whilst you're and and you I mean I think it's a fantastic idea looking at perhaps a job description of something that you're interested in and looking at their responsibilities but how do you how do you go about like do you just start doing the jobs or or do you have a chat with your manager for people who are perhaps a little bit less experience with that how how do you approach 
getting some more opportunities to, to... I would say it's a mix of speaking to your manager and sort of doing it yourself anyway. I think it's really good to put so your your manager's in a position where they don't feel like almost like sometimes they don't feel like they've got a choice whether they promote you or not. If if you if you can say, look, I'm doing it already, but I think then it's also you don't want to be stepping on anyone's toes. So I think there's there's a level of respect there in terms of speak to your manager. However, if you see little bits that you think that you could pick up, do it. Do, do you know what I mean? I, I, a mix of both, like a hands-on approach as well as speaking to your manager. So talking about progression, what's next for you then, Rhiannon? Um, I don't actually know. So because I've just finished, so I went from HR apprentice to HR administrator to HR assistant in three years. So many HRs. I've never heard HR so much in yeah, one sorry. sentence. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, carry on. <laughs> um, and in three years. So I did that in three years and get got my, obviously, level two business admin and my CIPD level three. So at the minute, I've, I feel like I've, I've had enough for the three years now. And yeah, I, yeah, for the next year, I'm just sort of going to take what I can and just in experience. Mm. Um, and just sort of and see where that gets me. Obviously, I'm, I'm looking at HR advisor. That's my next step up. Um, but for yeah, for the next year, I'm sort of going to give myself a tiny break. Because as I said, take everything you can, but at the same time, sort of live in the moment and yeah. soak it all up. And that's what we can. spoke about before. Like, be happy. Don't you don't always have to keep progressing and progressing. Enjoy yeah. life. You got know yeah, I mean? Sometimes definitely. smell the roses, right? Oh take yeah, definitely. Smell the and I'm 20, so I'm still looking at going off so and having really holidays. Good. And yeah, like I think it's like a mix of a mix of both in yeah. in that respect. So, is there anything that? Um, Let's say if there's anybody out there who's who's perhaps not in the world of work at the moment and haven't got access to those opportunities, or or they're um they're they're feeling a bit lost in the the role that they're in, but there's no opportunity for them in that particular role. Um, is there anything else anyone could do like outside of the world of work to to help them develop perhaps some of those soft skills that you're talking about? I think in if when you're looking at development, I think you can't develop yourself until you have got those soft skills. So I, I always say work from the soft skills and up. So the soft skills are your foundation um, within a work environment. Um, and then experience individual to the role is then what you build that on. Um, in terms of if someone's unhappy within their role, is that is that what you... Yeah, yeah. Um, or if they were unhappy at college or... I would say get out there and try something new. I think there's definitely there's there is no point staying like where you are and staying stationary in, in, in that respect. I think get out and try it and if it doesn't work, get out and try the next thing and you'll find something that then you're happy with and you like and then you work at that. But anything you do do, work at it never like nevertheless. Do you know what I mean? So even if you are in a job that you're not enjoying as much, still take everything you can from it and absorb everything you can and whack it on a CV and move on to the next job. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think from like speaking about your experience, so thank you for sharing that. Like, I think you've been very proactive, and I think that's that's something that the listeners can take away of is you know you're leading your own progression. Awesome. So, have you got any kind of final thoughts or, or words of wisdom that you want to share with the listener before we go, Ruth? Take everything you can. As I said, yeah, take everything. Absolutely. Thank you for your time today and um, and thanks for coming on the Thank podcast. Thank you. Brilliant. If you have any further questions, don't forget to email us on podcast at cube-learning.co.uk. And don't forget that's cube with a Q. So hi to Adrian and thanks for coming on the right route today. Um, on this episode, we're talking all about progression and how important that is to continuously progress through your journey. Um, so I was wondering if you could just introduce yourself to the listeners and also give us a bit of an idea of how you've been able to progress throughout your career. Yeah, of course. Um, Adrian Grove, um, I'm Business Development Director for Cube Learning. Um, so I've been um, with, with Cube for around um, four years now um, and sort of started my my um, my career off in, in a completely different sector. So like many young people, I, I left um, left school, wasn't particularly academic, so my results weren't really where they needed to be, and um, probably knew that further education wasn't the route for myself, uh, and wanted a more sort of hand, hands, hands-on experience. So I had an opportunity for a, a programme called a, a Youth Training Scheme, which is a, a sort of equivalent to a modern-day traineeship, I suppose, where there was a, a combined um, sort of work experience on the job, 
uh, in retail with uh, one week in every four away um, studying just a, a small sort of MVQ type qualification. Didn't really have any aspirations at that, at that point, to be, to be fair. Uh, you, you mentioned you didn't have many aspirations. At which point of your journey was that? Um, that was right at the start, KOD. So um, I think when I when I left school, um, like I said, I didn't really have any aspirations to go into retail. It, 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 it's something that obviously we all experience retail in our lives. But I'd give it give it a go and um, see where where it took me. So yeah, that was a six month program, and it was sort of fairly early on um, during that program. I thought actually retail sort of fitted in with what, what I wanted to perhaps do in the future. found that I, I was actually quite good at, at sort of um, talking to customers, which is obviously quite important. I suppose when I, in, in my, my younger years, I was sort of quite a shy, quiet person. So actually I found retail was really good for sort of bringing, bringing that out of myself. So, and then um, I found I was, you know, sort of pretty good at um, merchandising and, and actually, you know, sort of in, enjoy that, that experience. So I was fortunate to complete the, 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 the six month course and, and get offered a, a permanent role within, within the business, um, which obviously I, I grasped with both, both hands. Knew that retail was the type of business that you could have progression routes through. There was obviously more senior roles within the store within the business and, and, and thought it was it was something that I could sort of create a career for, for myself. So you mentioned that you're quite shy at the beginning. So do you find that you had to progress not only throughout your career, but you also had to progress as an individual? Oh, absolutely. I think um, you, you, you're certain, certainly protected at school, got your, your peers that you, that you go to school with for, you know, 10 years. And then, you know, as soon as you, you get out into the, the, the real world as, as it is, you know, you, you suddenly find additional skills, behaviours, you know, confidence that you didn't know that you had within within you. That's what I certainly found um, within my, my early days is that I probably came on leaps and bounds from, from a confidence perspective and, you know, probably the prospect of having a more senior role uh, when I started my, my career. Uh, wasn't even on my radar. Um, it wasn't something that I aspired to. But having gained experience and confidence, it was something that I was willing to embrace and, and, and try and, and do the best I could. So that's the interesting that you mentioned, that you never really had much prospects or much, you mentioned earlier, not much aspirations, but you're in a position right now which is very, very good. So do you think that we've been discussing on the episode so far that people need to begin with the end in mind, but do you think that sometimes you kind of just see how it goes along the way? Absolutely. I mean, it's always best if you, if, if you through your, through your schooling life, you 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 know where where the end goal is. But I think that doesn't really necessarily fit in for everybody. Okay, that's interesting. And I think you know that's something that you can develop. And it might, you know, I was lucky. I I found a good career in retail. I found something that I that I was good at um, first time round. I think that's one of the benefits of, say, a traineeship programme is that you can actually experience different sectors and to see what's right for yourself. So you don't have, you know, don't don't be disappointed if you try a certain sector and it doesn't work for you. You know, go out and and, and try a, a different one because there will be, you know, there will be a sector out there that that will will work for you. Yeah, I think that's really important that um, just to mention that you know you happen to to enjoy that first opportunity that you had but it's not necessarily going to be the case for everyone and that you might might start going down a path and then your aspirations change and and kind of you can find a, a passion or or a desire to switch out so I think that's really valuable for the listener to to hear in that um so obviously you have been able to to get to the heights of of a of a director but that has been moved away from the world of retail so can you just talk us through how you went through that transition and how you progressed um, further into that particular field yeah yeah of course um so when i got to a stage where i felt that our family retail uh, was really long hours I've, I've worked for some really challenging retailers and i didn't really feel that i was um, sort of having as much family time as, as what i wanted so I wanted to look at an alternative uh, sort of career route and i thought that some of the skills that i've, I've, I've learned 
and gains during my retail career would would pour into the education sector. So there was an opportunity to join Cube. It, it was a, a lesser role than what I was on um, within retail. So, uh, but actually, I thought, yeah, I need to step backwards to move forwards again. So I've done it before, and I was pretty confident that I could do it again. So once again, didn't really know really if I made that switch across to the FE sector, whether or not I would be able to make the same progress within that within within the sectors I had with retail. But I backed myself, and I thought that I could that I could I could do that. And, and similar to my retail career, you know, I had to learn new skills. I knew very little around apprenticeships, about further education, and it was something that I'd always done through my retail career as far as develop people. I think it's always good to develop people within your own team and to give people similar opportunities to, to what I had for myself. And um, so I thought some of that would pour over. So once again, I had to, had to learn from scratch. Um, had to learn, you know, fairly quickly, and you know, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed um, working with the employers, delivering the type of customer service that I've delivered through my retail career to them, and also seeing the, the results of where people had, had completed the qualifications. And you know, hopefully, by completing the qualifications, people it enables them to um, to progress within their business as well had a, a, an opportunity to, to move into a head of department role, which uh, once again, I sort of in, embraced that opportunity and found once again that, you know, I, I, I ran a successful department. So I was very proud of what, what I did. And I was fortunate enough to be asked by um, Joe Crosley, uh, the CEO, CEO, to um, become director of the um of the business development team so and once again it was it was it, it came out of the blue but it, it was great to, to see that joe and the rest of the directors have had faith in myself and they you know they can they 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 knew that i could do the job which was which is was, which was also really good when you when you go for the best within the business is that the people who are, are, you're going to be working with have got faith in you i think one thing i think we really need to highlight for listeners is the fact that you mentioned quite early on there that you had to take a step backwards because even though this episode is all about progress and how can you progress throughout your career a lot of us think that progress means one direction going forwards but like you just said adrian sometimes you might need to take a step backwards or even two step backwards in order to go forwards again so i think that's quite an interesting point I think people shouldn't be afraid to do that. Obviously, you know, we're not always fortunate to be able to do that financially. Sometimes people aren't in the position to do it. And um, it was challenging, you know, for myself to do to do that. It wasn't easy. You know, you had to tighten the belt a little bit. But actually, I knew it was the right thing for myself, my family, and also just to give myself some fresh enthusiasm as well for my, for my career. But then as young people who who don't necessarily have the financial commitments and stuff like that if they take a step backwards how can they be sure that they're not taking a step backwards just keep going back because how can they again move that shift to go forwards again you've just got you've got to back yourself you know you've got to, you've got to have confidence that that you can you can uh, aspire to to get where you where you want to get to again i think that's that's the that's the key and i think if you've already done it once twice and you can do it again I think every every business want people within their within their, their organisation who are passionate about their job, and I think if you can demonstrate that and you can uh, do and, and deliver the, the performance that's required, I think any business will give you those individuals those those opportunities to progress. So I think it will naturally happen. You know, people people will be successful, and you know you've just got to just have confidence in yourself. I know KOD, you've talked about that yourself as, as well, and you know you always come about come across as a as a very confident. How do I? Thank you. <laughs> uh, and and I think you've, that's that's part of the, the part of the key um, to to, to um, progression is to have confidence. I mean, I I went for roles um, in my in my retail career that. Uh, I knew I was unlikely to get. I applied for stores that were, you know, quite large, high turnover stores, which I didn't necessarily think I'd get the the, the job. But actually, I thought, well, I'll put put my hat um, in the ring and see what see what happens. And mm. and um, you know, even if I wasn't successful, the experience that I went through 
for the application and the interview stood me in good stead for what was to, what was to come. Yeah, I like that. F- fantastic. And um, I wondered if you could just um, help us out with, we've received a question from one of uh, Kaidi's followers on Instagram. And the question um, in essence says that the, well, the question says, I currently haven't got any confidence and any idea about what it is that I, I want to do or even the direction that I want to go. So what do I do? So could you help perhaps give us some advice on perhaps from your experience about how to, to find that? I suppose, first of all, it's for me, retail was something that I knew as far as the fact that like I mentioned earlier, you know, you go, you, you experience retail every single day. So it wasn't something that was foreign to me. I knew that it was something that, that I'd experienced. So I think first of all, it's, it's try and look at a career that's something that you, you perhaps have got, a, you're passionate about and um, have some interest. Because I think who, you know, I think if you're going to be successful within within your, your sector, you need to have some kind of empathy with it. Um, listen to your peers, listen to more experienced people within within your organisation, draw on their skills. I mean, I think one of the key things you can do is realise what your limitations are initially, try and um, try and gain on other people's experiences and knowledge, actually sort of in, improve your skill set. I think if you do that, then, you know, you will gain in confidence because actually you'll be like, yeah, I can do that. don't need to draw on anyone else's experience. I can, I can do that myself now. I think if you can sort of see that improvement in, in yourself, I think that goes a great way. It goes a long way towards helping that, um, helping that confidence. Fantastic. Uh, another question that we've got is, um, is from somebody who's looking for work experience and they're asking about like, what kind of places they should look and, and how do they find work experience so any ideas or, or any tips on, on how to, to help somebody direct them to, to some useful places or resources that you might be aware of? Yeah, I, I think there's um, there's some really useful websites like Get My First Job, Not Going to Uni, obviously that, that promote um, opportunities like traineeships. And I think the other thing is as well is if, you, if you've got a sector that you're really keen to, to, to get into, don't wait for opportunities to present themselves. Actually go out and look for opportunities. I think if I was an employer and I had a, a young person um, come in and see me and say, you know, I, I, I want to, a career in, in, in retail or admin, business administration, whatever it might be, are you willing to take me on for some work experience? I think I'd, I'd give that person a go. And I think that's one of the things that I've always said to people is don't, don't just wait, look, sit back, wait for something to happen. Try and drive it yourself. So yes, there are traineeship opportunities out there, and those can be found on you know sort of training providers' websites, but also sort of government websites as well. But also just just try and find opportunities for yourself as well. I mean, one of the experiences I had when I came back, I, I um, took a, a 15 month break from my career to to go travelling, and I came back and I came across a, a, a business called um, the Range and went shopping in there. And I was like, this is an amazing store. I'd love, love to get a job here. Three months later, I was a store manager in, in, in one of their stores. And I, I had to really sort of approach them, tell them I, why I was interested in coming to work for them and really sell myself. So I think there are many ways to skin a cat and it's not necessarily just waiting for things to happen. It's being proactive, and that's that's probably one of the things I would say to people: just go out there and try and create something yourself. Yeah, I like that. So it's what you said before, right? You got to throw your hat in the ring. Don't just keep the hat on your head. So one thing I want to ask an agent: I mean, you've like going to that in three months. You know, going from walking in a store asking for a position, becoming store manager in three months, and also just your career generally. Like, have you had to have like any outside support or any external supporter who helped you, or is it just you literally just going around and just crushing it? No, just um, very little outside um, support. I mean, you know, probably looking back on my career now, I would have loved to have had a, an opportunity to to have a qualification to support my my progression. So, obviously, with apprenticeships, that's uh, you know, there's one available to support probably each progression route. So, but I, I listen to my peers. I think that's you know, you've you've got to listen to people who've got experience within that sector and learn from them yes you're going to have your own ideas and that's one of the things that that businesses want to bring new people in is because they've got new ideas so 
totally bring those to the table, but actually listen to to, to what your your peers have uh, and what they say and knowledge and skills that they that, that they can teach you. And yeah, just 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 do that. It's like know you your limitations, and you know if you're a manager, there will be lots of people within your team who are better at doing things than yourself. Don't be afraid to get make sure that they are the guys who are who, who are working on the projects that you, you haven't got the skill sets for. But obviously, try and pick up little snippets of knowledge that will help you develop yourself. You know, I think, like I said, it's it, it is about sort of just seizing those opportunities and never be be afraid to be you you know to apply for a role, even if you don't think you you're necessarily there at the moment. What that will create for your um, line managers is that they know that you're keen to progress. So, and that's something that will be in the back of their minds going forward. Awesome. And I think um, something that we covered with Rhiannon when she was, I guess, or when we spoke to Rhiannon earlier, um, was thinking about how you can develop yourself without necessarily kind of putting it in the face of, of your manager or anyone like that, um, that you need that that next opportunity, like trying to be proactive is something that you've you've mentioned as well and, and looking at skill sets and talking to people and asking for extra responsibilities and things like that, um, which I think is fantastic. You went traveling and you took that gap because quite a lot of people these days are going traveling. Yeah, definitely. And um, and do you think that would that would be a negative for somebody if they had that gap? Um, how, what experience have you got of that? No, I mean I think it's. I mean I I, I um, went traveling. I think I was probably um, early thirties, so probably quite late on to take so that. You also went quite late then, yeah. And. Um, I think it did two things. I think, A, it was a really fantastic um, sort of experience for, for myself. You know, you can't you, you can't replicate any of those things that you learn um, whilst you're travelling, some of the situations you find yourself in, some of the great people that you you find uh, or you meet. But also what it did is it, it gave me some fresh enthusiasm when I came back to, to um, kick on again. So I think, you know, I would always encourage people. It doesn't have to be 15 months. I mean, that's quite a long time to go to go traveling, you know, and it was, it was you know, obviously, it, it, it took a bit of time to finance it. But I think that uh, actually it can be three months, it can be six months, whatever. But actually, I'd encourage people to do it because it, it does give you that, that sort of other perspective on life and what is going on out in the wider world. So, you know, certainly... And, you know, hopefully if you've got an employer that will see the benefits in that and actually, you know, perhaps support you to, to take that gap and, and you can come back into the into the business. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Adrian. Um, just thinking about people, people who are kind of learning new skills and, um, and looking to progress in, into doing the, the next thing for them that's right for, for their route. Um, is there any kind of advice that you give to people about um, how you actually demonstrate that because you know, might know that you're progressing you might know you're learning more um, but how would you display that to other people so they know and then they can help you to get onto that next step of the ladder I suppose your performance can be measured in different ways but I think the retail is a, is a, is a, a great industry where performance can be measured on obviously your sales your standards of your store you know your, your KPIs so I think you need to meet all those you know, take the opportunity for one to during a one to one with your line manager to discuss your career um, aspirations, I suppose, and make sure that they're aware where you want to get to. So I think uh, that's that's important to get that out, out on the table. Um, and I think most employers, like I say, if you if you're delivering uh, on your KPIs and and um, you're delivering a good performance, they'll want to retain you within the business. They won't want you looking elsewhere because they, you know organisations don't want to lose good people. And I suppose it's it's making sure that that you you bring up your aspirations as as, as many times as possible, really. But uh, you know you you're not in a strong position if you're not performing. So that's the key thing. You know, the timing's really important. You don't want to be knocking on the door of your your manager or and your boss when when you're not performing, um, and you're not meeting those KPIs. I think that's you know it's really important that, that that's the case. So yeah, so that would be my 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 sort of advice as far as trying to to, to flag up with your your manager, you know, your aspirations about your career. For for the listener, then, um, 
Have you got any kind of key takeaways or final thoughts that you'd like to share with them? I would say never, never underestimate you. You know your your own um, potential. I think I think people people can aspire to what they want. You know, obviously, you know people aspire to different levels. So if you want to aspire to just going up to a, a sort of supervisory team leading role, that's great. But actually, you know, if you want to go beyond that, just and and, and don't try and rush it. You know, it's something that might take a bit longer, but actually, you know, don't rush that that progression. I think, I think people can be over promoted sometimes. It's better to be promoted um, within a, a reasonable time scale, so that you know that you'll you'll be successful when you get to that next level. And you know, just 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 rely, you know, just call upon the experience of your peers and draw on their strengths. I think that's important as well. Don't be afraid to to ask for support, help, ask for help. You know, there's always someone out there who will be willing to give you that advice. I think that's that's important as well. Absolutely Brilliant. awesome. Thank you so much for coming on to the Right Route podcast and can't wait to speak to you soon and good luck for the future. Thanks for listening and I hope that you've enjoyed series one of the Right Route. Make sure you stay subscribed, make sure you stay tuned and listen out for when we release series two.